welcome everybody. I can see that we have um, some folks that made it to find us today. We are excited about our program today about Mars and I'm going to turn the program. My name is Carly Rogers. I'm from the Sandusky Library and I'm going to turn our program over to Gene Zajac, um, NASA Solar System Ambassador. So I will let him take over for us. I hope everybody can hear me. And Solar System Ambassador, the program today is on Mars. I, okay, and so we're going to talk about Mars today, one of my favorite planets, second to Earth. And when the night sky, this was March 4th, and you can see Taurus, the bull with its V, called the Hyades, and that's what Mars looks like. Mars was nice and bright. This is a done with a camera. It was the astronomy picture of the day for March 4th, 2021. Mars appears brighter than any of the stars. It's not as bright as Venus. It's not as bright as the moon or the sun, of course, but it still has its red luster. And because it was red, people looked at Mars and thought of things that were red. Things that were red, for example, violence, fire, war, death, destruction. So many cultures looked at Mars and thought that Mars was a planet to be reckoned with. It was looked at a planet of violence. And so we have Aries. We have Aries is the god of Mars, Greek and Roman. Now Aries is gonna be looking like this from a statue, but he has many other images, often carrying a sword, often carrying a spear, often with fire and easy to anger. That was the god of Mars. Now, when you look at Mars at night with a good, decent telescope, you can notice that there are ice caps. You can notice light and dark features, and it does have a nice red. Even a pair of binoculars, if you steady it, you can get a good look at Mars. And there are certain times in which you want to look at Mars where it's more advantageous. Now, when we look at Mars and Earth, we see the red planet Mars. One thing I noticed right away in this picture is there is no cloud cover. You'll never have clouds blocking the sun on Mars. Although you could have a dust storm that is very, very nasty. So when we look at Mars, Compared to Earth, we see that Earth is much larger. About, Mars is about half the diameter of Earth. We rotate just about the same. So now as we go around the sun, so does Mars. And there are times in which Earth and Mars are at a greatest distance possible. And there are times in our orbit and Mars orbit in which we are really close to one another. And this is the best time to look at Mars to see features. You can always look at Mars in the night sky, as long as the sun isn't in your way. Now, the idea to remember is we move faster around the sun. And so as where we are now, you're looking at from the sun side of Earth, passing in front of Mars. And when people plotted where Mars was, they were able to see that it looked like it backed up. So there it is, an opposition in a bunch of astronomy terms that people looked at, which we don't need to know because we don't care about the astronomy right now as far as the terminology. But there are times in which Mars is extremely close to Earth, which we call favorable oppositions. 1998, it had a great one, and in 1997. 1997, one that I remember well, is being out with telescopes and observing it, and it did look very bright. 1719, Giacomo Filippo Maraldi <laughs> suggested that Mars has seasons way back in the 1700s. And then Sir William Herschel, who happens to be my favorite astronomer of all time, in 1783, he confirmed in his opinion that, yeah, Mars does change. The spots 
and dark areas and light areas do change. The ice caps do increase and decrease. And so in 1860, what was the reason? It was suggested vegetation. This is going to start the road, the road to Mars, Mars life, and Martians. So maps are drawn, maps showing the dark areas. Now notice the Hubble pictures, incredible. Again, telescope, and then observations and people filling in the gaps with their imagination. Giovanni Schiaparelli, I just love his name, Giovanni Schiaparelli. He saw in 1877 favorable conjunction and he saw canales, meaning marks or grooves, all right, canale. Unfortunately, canale also sounds like canals and it could be misinterpreted to mean canals and then we start thinking canals, water, life, Martians. Also in 1877, during that favorable conjunction where Earth and Mars are fairly close to one another, relatively speaking, two moons are discovered by Asaph Hall. So 1877 was the beginning of the Canales and beginning of Asaph Hall's moons, Phobos and Deimos. Phobos and Deimos, fear and panic. These were the horses that poured that pulled the chariots of Aries. So since they pulled the chariots of Aries, they were then considered to be the moons. Astronomers try to have some logic in naming things. This was logical, all right? If Aries is the god of war and he has two horses that pull them, why not call the moons that? Not saying that fear and destruction is part of Mars, it just went along with the current thinking of how astronomy names objects with some rhyme or reason. So we see Mars with its canales and Percival Lowell thinking that they crisscross the surface. So now we look at it. When we start looking at it, we think that these could possibly be areas irrigating the ice caps and taking care of things which leads us to the Martians. And the Martians look like Jean-Luc Picard. So Mars data. It's one and a half times farther away from the sun than we are. An AU, one AU is an astronomical unit which means the distance between Earth and the sun, or in this case, 144 million miles. Earth is 93 million miles, that's one AU. And we get, this is the closest we ever get. Mars does 128 million miles away. Earth year, 365 and a quarter. Mars, twice as long. Inclinations, very similar between Earth and Mars. The rotation, 24 hours, 0 0.63, 0 0.62, and meanwhile, Earth, 23 hours, 56 minutes, and four point something seconds. That is the true rotation. The, our radiuses are different. Now the atmosphere, carbon dioxide is the main component. Look where carbon dioxide is on Earth, 0.04. We both have Nitrogen, but Mars, not so much. Oxygen, it's missing from the atmosphere of Mars. Mars is not a place where you're going to go and breathe. The surface air pressure, 1% of Earth. The temperature range, minus 103 to a very balmy, balmy 32 degrees. That's about as warm as it gets. Another interesting thing discovered on Mars that if you're standing out there on a warm day and your feet are at 32 degrees, hot for Mars, well, by the time the, because it's such a low atmosphere, by the time you get to the temperature at your head, it's below zero. The temperature change is extreme in a very short distance. Earth's average temperature is 59 degrees. Mars, 
nine. Now, you'll be, you'll lose weight on Mars just by standing there because it's only roughly 40% of Earth. So you weigh 40% of what you do on the Earth. It means you jump a little bit higher. Now to go to Mars. So we're going to have a liftoff and go to Mars. We've done all we can do with the telescope. Next is to get there. Time to go to Mars. And we have all kinds of vehicles, over 45 missions to Mars. Let's see what it was. Yeah, 45 missions to Mars as of today. More are planned. Some of these aren't missions to Mars, like the Saturn. That got us people on the moon. The shuttle, it does have a place on Mars, as you'll see later on. But getting to Mars, that's the only way you get there. You've got to average 22,500 miles an hour just to jump off the surface of the Earth. If you want to get to Mars, you've got to go even faster. Now, flybys to Mars began in 1960. The first six failed. That's by any country, every country, until Mariner 4. It's the first one that gets there. There have been 37 attempts to fly by or orbit Mars. Only 16 were successful. How about landers? It's nice to land. Well, of the 18 landers, we're at 50%. Nine have been successful. This takes into account Japan, China, USSR, then it changed to Russia and the United States. Now, how do you land on the surface? Because landing, that's the cool part. Parachute, you gotta have a parachute. Even though it's only 1% the atmosphere of Earth, you have to have a heat shield. Now you can do a rocket power landing, you can do airbags, or a crane combo, which is a lot of fun. Mariner 4, launched in 1964, arrives in 65. It gets 21 images on its flyby. First pictures of Mars are going to destroy some of our images. For example, the great Great Grand Canyon of Mars, Vallis Marineris. It's named Vallis Marineris because the first spacecraft to Mars, which actually noticed it, was Mariner 4. So that's why it's called Marinus. It is as long as the United States. And we're showing here three volcanoes, the Tharsis Montes, each one is bigger than Mount Everest. All volcanic called shield volcanoes. They rise up from the surface of Mars. Mars has this great chasm because of that part of the Martian landscape expanded out into space, ripping it and tearing it. It does not have tectonic plates. Mars does not have a magnetic field. It does not have a dynamic spinning core like Earth does. The Mariner Valley, 4,000 kilometers. Again, the width of the United States. One other thing seen on Mars, and okay, here we go with Martians again. Pictures came back of this. And therefore, fantasies again, the face on Mars. Boy, it sure looks like an Egyptian face. Must have been Martians trying to communicate with Earth. Oh, look, water. This is where water flowed through volcanoes going in this direction. And it does show the evidence of floods on Mars. Mars had running water. Proof positive. Thin atmosphere with various levels, just like Earth. Now we send a variety of orbiters to Mars. These orbiters are going to give us tremendous terabytes of information. 
tremendous photographs. In the face of Mars, when you look at it now, it's a plateau. If you squinted at it, you could see that Martian face again. But the cities and the valleys and the ruins around it that people fantasize, this was trying, the people of Mars are trying to communicate to Earth, just isn't true. But what our great observers flying or in orbit around Mars have discovered is these wonderful pictures of rivers, of melting substrate, ice melting and flowing down valleys. Mars had water. And the atmosphere where the carbon dioxide ice and the water ice is. I love this picture showing the valley, showing where the water has melted and has dribbled down as it melted at certain times. Remember, it can get 32 or even above if the sunlight is on it to melt a layer of ice that's underneath. How thick is it? Don't know, but it's fascinating. We just have fantastic pictures. And Mars has winds and we see the winds blowing here and creating a structure very similar to the structure on Earth with the dust coming across the Sahara and blowing out into the ocean. Similar features. Mars Observer increases our knowledge and information. Evidence for running water. The photographic evidence reveals, again, these are from flybys and orbiters, once existed in a great quantity on the surface of Mars. Outflow channels, riverbeds, and possible lakes. Mountains, volcanoes, Olympus Mons. This would be fun to ski. Imagine Texas, kind of outlining Texas. This is as big as Texas. If there was snow, you could just ski down it for a long, long time. Give you an idea. Mauna Kea, Mount Everest, and Olympus Mons. Huge shield volcano. The very first landing on Mars happened December 2nd, 1971. The USSR landed Mars 3. It was active for two minutes. So this is an artist's picture of what it might have looked like landing there. There's no picture of it because again, it, some say it lasted 20 seconds, some say two minutes. And the best image, this was <laughs> one of the best images, or is it? That's always the question. Is this a picture of the very first picture of Mars? It's from the television transmission. Now we send Viking landers. The Viking landers one and two start to come down. They're going to use rocket power. They're going to fire their engines as they hit the surface of Mars. There's one of the first pictures of the surface of Mars. From the Viking landers in the early morning, we could see carbon dioxide frost on the rocks. It actually took some samples. It was designed to, Viking 1 and 2, was designed to pick up some samples, bring it in, heat it up, and see if there was any sign of living organisms. Inconclusive data. About this time, on Earth, in Antarctica, a meteorite is discovered. It was discovered, ALH 84001, and it is determined to be from Mars. And as people examined it, they thought they saw maybe microorganisms, but very, very thin. Again, here we go. Mars life, 1984 is big brother watching. Okay, the second and my favorite way to land, going to Mars, the next missions, there's about four missions that can't land this way. Of the four, three are successful. It goes through the atmosphere, it has a heat shield, it then, has a parachute to slow it down some more. 
you got to have a very large parachute because again the atmosphere is very thin you're dealing with 40 percent the effective or effective gravity so now in that package is four different rovers that are going to land on mars four different satellites but you need airbags and so the airbags pop open just like the airbags on your car engines fired get rid of the parachute and let it drop and let it bounce bounces 21 times this is not a good way to land people after it rolls for a while it's going to come to a stop and after it comes to a stop the airbags deflate and then it opens up This is how Spirit, Opportunity, Pathfinder, Sojourner, and Beagle, a failed mission, was supposed to land. This is Sojourner and Pathfinder. This is the very first rover on Mars, Pathfinder. And Pathfinder, excuse me, Pathfinder was the mother satellite. Sojourner was a little rover. This is taken a picture of Sojourner by Pathfinder. And then the Lula rover is going to go out and explore. It's about the size of a microwave. And it took a picture of mom. There's mom. Mom's battery batteries died before Sojourner. So we actually don't know if Sojourner was wandering around, sending messages back to mom, and mom had quit sending messages back to Earth. Sojourner was taking a picture of, or was Sojourner was examining a rock. This one they called the bear head. As you see the little bear there, NASA had fun naming the rocks couch. There's couch. Oh, there's couch. There is couch. It looks like a couch. So the rover was taking pictures and we got an idea what the soil was actually like. Frost again on Mars from this, this perspective, thanks to Pathfinder and Sojourner. Spirit and opportunity. Both were hope, hope they would live for 90 days. That was the warranty. It says as limited minutes. Okay, that's just information. This is now is a picture from spirit nice flat beautiful landscape columbia hills complex it was called that because they decided to name the hills and the mountain ranges after the astronauts that passed away on the columbia accident the rovers moved around they have a little sundial right there And we get to see from opportunity this really flat layer that looks like at one time it was the bottom of a lake. They did a lot of roving around. They opened up Now, part of the Mars missions that the Russians had, Mars 3 and Mars 4, the reason it only lasted for a couple hours, is that Mars can be very clear, but when you get a dust storm, it can cover the entire planet. Same thing happened with Viking 1 and Viking 2. When they got there, they had to go in orbit for a while until the dust storm became less so that they could actually land safely. Because the dust storms, they're not as powerful that it would blow you over but the air is so light and the dust is so fine that it picks up and just stays in the atmosphere so you see planet-wide dust storms that'll be a problem now there is our model of spirit showing that it got covered with dust here's the problem with getting covered with dust it's going to stop your solar panels from working but Mars had a special thing in store for us. Mars has 
dust devils that went across the surface. And the dust devils actually cleaned off the solar panels, so they operated better. And we see the dust storms going across, exposing the darker dust down below. Opportunity in 2004 starts examining the environment and finds hematite, hematite, hematite and jarosite, both formed in the presence of water. The, the rovers also were able to drill into the surface to try to get an example. What are we looking for? What the material is made of. And wouldn't it be wonderful to find a fossil? Showed evidence of water. And while it was exploring, it found an iron meteorite that had fallen to Mars. And there it is on the surface. More than one meteorite was discovered on Mars. 19th century astronomers. Also, they found Sasquatch. One of the pictures from one of the rovers showed this image right there of a rock formation. And people said, ah, it's a Martian walking. I don't think so. We got to get rid of Mars, Mars Martians. Then we decided to land Mars Phoenix Lander in 2009. This was the second attempt at landing something at the pole of Mars. When it landed, parachute and then engine. Didn't use any airbags for this one, but the wheels dug up the soil to expose underneath snow, frost, water frost, not just carbon dioxide this time. It also had a ranger that would fire up into the air. And when it was the laser was firing up into the air, it kept bouncing back sooner and sooner and sooner. The feeling was that it was frozen carbon dioxide snow, precipitation happening there on Mars. It took a picture of its own legs. And what we see is ice, water ice and icicles formed underneath the rover. Water exists on Mars. Now, another way to go to Mars. The most advanced technique. Now, I, don't ha I have the sound off on these. But there are six different vehicles, 76 bolts that are going to explode at the right time. No room for error. Again, you have an atmosphere to contend with. Seven minutes to land. They call it NASA seven minutes of terror because during that seven minutes, you don't get much communication. This is curiosity landing. When we first get word that we touch the top of the atmosphere, you need a heat shield again. You fire rockets to stabilize it. They're big with their seven minutes of terror. Entry descent landing, also known as EDL, is referred to as the seven minutes of terror because we've got literally seven minutes. So you see, it's going to have the parachute. And then it's going to do radar to determine where it is. It's going to release itself from the heat shield. And then as it comes down, it's going to lower the rover on a crane. It's going to touch down. And then the lander has to fly away. So that's the sequence of how you land on Mars using the crane method. So many things could go wrong. Done it twice now and both times success. Curiosity. And also the most recent one, Perseverance. From Curiosity, it took pictures of where it's been. 
another unique part of the uh, surface of Mars. Again, the whole idea is, can we find evidence of running water that happened in the past? Can we find any evidence of possible life? Beautiful pictures. This, these are all from curiosity. Immense information has come from curiosity. Now, perseverance. Perseverance, our last, most recent guy to land on the surface, kind of did a self-portrait of itself. What a beautiful landscape. It would be wonderful, I think, to be a geologist on, on Mars. Remember, you got to bring your own air, bring your own water, and always wear a spacesuit. You can't step outside. Gorgeous pictures. Going to any of these sites, NASA has made available all the pictures from all the rovers and all the flyby missions that I'm showing you. You wouldn't have time to go look and examine them all. Incredible pictures. You can see where they picked it to land. You can even see some sand dunes here from the wind blowing the fine dust. That's what created those horizontal and vertical lines right there and right there. This is where it landed. But Perseverance had one other special thing that it brought with it. It brought a helicopter. There's some advantages to bringing a helicopter. One of the problems we have on Earth is in rescuing people who are mountain climbing, we, we find that the atmosphere becomes less. So maybe this technology on Earth and by using this will help us figure out, is it possible to be effective with rescuing people? The success of this one called Ingenuity was great. It's gonna now be used to plan where the rover Perseverance will travel, where it will go and what it'll explore. It has um, quite a few cameras. There is a picture it took of itself as it was flying. It lifted up, took a picture of the ground. Look, Ma, I'm flying. Scooping up soil, testing the soil, testing the consistency of it. This is what the rovers have done. So that's just a over, quick overview of what Mars is, how it compares to Earth. It has seasons, a tilt like ours, a day almost the same as ours. And we continue to explore and continue to plan to explore Mars. I tried to go quickly knowing that we were limited yeah. in time. So if anybody has any questions, we may have a few minutes to answer some of those. Um, when the, the pictures that you showed towards the end, so Perseverance was in just last year, right? Is that right? 2020? Yeah, it's this year, yes. And then the previous one, what year was that? I can't remember the name, sorry. Sure. Spirit and Opportunity landed in 2003. Okay. Just the pictures of the the detail are just fascinating. When you go to the Spirit and Opportunity site, they have tremendous videos where they took, put the cameras together and created images so you get to drive the surface. And it's all accessible to the public? So we- Absolutely, yes, NASA. I'll have to see about sharing those like on our Facebook page too. You know, that's one thing I forgot to do is to include that. And Curiosity Rover, course was just this year okay. uh, 2018 it left the earth and then landed crazy and let's see if I can find real quickly very quickly curiosity was 2011 okay 
Okay. And Interesting. it was, again, 90-year warranty. <laughs> it's eight years going strong. It's active. Huh. If you go to Curiosity, you can actually see where it is now. Both Spirit and Opportunity were over 15 times their warranty and their 90 days. And <laughs> they just shut off one of them, uh, the last one. Spirit kind of got stuck, wasn't pointed toward the sun, its batteries didn't charge, and the Martian environment froze it up. Huh. Where Opportunity after they got curiosity down. Let's put the money toward this one because it has better cameras. Huh. And you and I were talking before they're hoping to bring back a sample in 2024. That is a plan. Yes. To actually bring some, you know, put another rover down. I don't know which technique they'll use. They seem to like that sky crane thing because you can land a bigger thing than with airbags and land it gather up some soil, and here's where not sure exactly if they would have an orbiter that the sample could go up to the orbiter because you could not blast something off Mars and have it hit the Earth. So you would have to blast something off Mars, go to an orbiter going around Mars, which would have enough oomph to blast off and return to Earth. Even though it's downhill, gravity well wise from Mars to the Earth, you, you have windows of opportunity. Remember the, how the orbits are different? Two years for one compared to our one. You have to plan it. A number of rockets sent to Mars missed. They were sent to Mars and, and since some of them came from, from a country that is not always forthcoming with their information, I'm not sure if they were orbiters or orbiter landers, but they missed Mars totally. Two going to Phobos, which would have been fun, missed Phobos. One, they think that some engineer pressed the wrong button and turned the antenna away from Earth and lost. So every country that has sent stuff there has had failures. Again, we're running about 50% success. Huh. Fascinating. It really is. Do any of you have any other questions? You can put them in the chat or you can unmute yourself if there's anything you want to ask. You did great for time. <laughs> And if we plan on the one in the summer, that'll be great too. With uh, Yeah, yeah. We're hoping to have you back. Nice yes. Sky. Constellations to kind of go with our summer reading theme. Yeah. So we'll look forward to having you back then again. So and who knows? We might be able to get WebEx working. That would be awesome. We'll keep trying, huh? <laughs> yeah, we'll keep trying. Well, if we don't have any other questions, we will say thank you and have a great night. Thank you all for attending.